Torbox sent me their Torbox Elite controller about a month and a half ago to test out. This video is not sponsored by Torbox. These are just my honest opinions on the controller. They just sent me the controller. You can use this thing with Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, Lightroom, Blender, and many other applications that you could find yourself using when creating content. Whether you're a video editor, a photographer, or anywhere in between, this controller is aimed for you. The controller itself allows you to map out custom commands to the buttons on the controller itself. And in doing so, mapping out the buttons and the commands is intended to speed up your editing or creative process. Keeping all of the major editing functions and commands all in one place to essentially edit with one hand. And I say edit because in my case, I'm using this with Final Cut Pro, but like I said, you can use this with pretty much any application you can think of. The design of the Torbox Elite controller is really solid in my opinion. Even though it is made out of like a really tough and thick plastic, it does not feel cheap at all and it feels very well built. The buttons and knobs feel and sound really satisfying and it also features haptic feedback in all of the knobs. Future voiceover will hear, I totally forgot to mention that in the software, you can actually change the strength of the haptic feedback in each one of the knobs and dials, as well as change the rotation speed of each knob and dial. In total, buttons and knobs included, there are 14 programmable buttons, three of which being knobs, with the ability to press them like a button. And even though there's only 14 buttons, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's only limited to 14 commands. We'll get to that in a minute. The Torbox Elite features Bluetooth operation with two AA batteries supplying power, as well as a USB-C port here on the back, which you probably can't see because it's not focusing, to supply power as well as connect to a computer. It also features a neat switcher on the bottom that allows you to switch back and forth between two computers if you use two separate computers for your content creation. So Torbox sells the Torbox Neo, which is a base model of this control. It features all of the same buttons and knobs, just without haptic feedback and Bluetooth. I did not get a chance to get my hands on that controller specifically, so this review is about the Torbox Elite. Out of the box, it comes with two AA batteries. Once the batteries are in the controller and plugged in, you just turn it on and it's ready to go and be connected to your computer. Then you can go download their Torbox Console 5 software. Once you download the software, it will prompt you to connect the controller via Bluetooth or cable. And from there, you can pretty much customize this thing any way you want. The Torbox Console software allows allows you to fully customize each of the buttons of the controller for your specific workflow. And with different presets available for each application, you can learn these functions to start and then eventually build out your own presets and custom commands for the controller. So for example, the dial on my controller is set to shift plus mouse scroll reverse, which allows me on Final Cut to scroll the bottom timeline really easily just by using this dial. Double pressing and single pressing buttons can have their own unique commands. My side button, if I double press it, it deletes a clip in Final Cut Pro. And if that wasn't enough customization, you can actually combine buttons to make their own unique command as well. For example, my top and tall button when pressed together is set to automatic speed in Final Cut Pro, which then sets the automatic speed of each clip. If a clip is recorded at 60 frames per second and I press my top and tall buttons, triggering automatic speed, it then slows it down to around 40% in a 24 frames per second timeline. On top of that, if you've ever played a console or an Xbox, Xbox is better, you're used to these up, down, left, right buttons here on the bottom of the controller. And just like all the other buttons, they can be customized as well. But one cool thing that the Torbox console features is the smart HUD. As you can see, it shows what each button corresponds to here on the controller on the screen. Like I said before, you can use combinations of buttons to further customize your controller. And when you press a specific button, like the top button, you'll see that the HUD changes and shows you what the combination of the top button and each of the corresponding, I call them D-pad, D-pad buttons will do as well. So for example, if I press the top button and then the up button, it will insert a clip onto the timeline. If I press the top button and the down button, it will append a clip to the storyline. I haven't really customized these yet. These are specific to the preset for Final Cut Pro, but there's so much capability in this controller that I haven't even been able to tap in to all of the customization yet on this thing. And I've been using it for like a month now. So let's run through an example of how you can set up a specific command in the Torbox console. So for this example, we're gonna be changing the pressing of the knob command. So to do that, you're gonna wanna find the corresponding command in the menu or you can actually press the button itself and it will quickly bring it up for you you're going to click on the middle 
and then it will bring up this menu here showing you all the different commands and keystrokes you can possibly do for this specific button press. So for me, I want this to be a marker or adding a marker in Final Cut Pro. And to do that, it's just the press of the M key. So I'll go up here to this search bar and press M and you'll see where it says add marker. I'll click OK. And then now every single time I press the center knob, it will add a marker on a clip. So another really cool feature about the Torbox Console 5 software is the ability to do macro commands. And essentially all that means is that you can stack multiple commands on top of a keystroke or button press in the software. Let's say I wanted to do automatic speed in Final Cut Pro, plus I wanted to play at the beginning of the playhead. So if I wanna make a macro command, I'll go to the set or combination of buttons that I wanna change. For me, it's gonna be top and tall. And when I click on that, in the middle, instead of going to basic and just doing one command, you're gonna go over here to macro. And so you want to add a macro command. You can really name it anything you want. So the first command that I'm gonna use, which I have specifically set up in Final Cut Pro is shift, command, and enter. Then after that, I'm gonna add the up button because in Final Cut Pro, that moves your playhead to the beginning of the clip. And then from there, I'm just gonna click space and that will automatically play the clip back. And so from there, you can see all of the three commands are stacked up. So now you can see in Final Cut Pro, if I have a clip selected and I press my top and tall buttons, it will slow the clip down to its automatic speed and then immediately play the clip from the beginning. Along with the Smart HUD feature, they also have a feature called the dynamic panel. And when you press this button right next to the center knob, it will bring up your dynamic panel on your screen and with a dynamic panel, you can place commonly used sliders like exposure, saturation, and tint right there on the panel to be able to quickly use on the fly. It's pretty handy, but it looks like Premiere Pro is the only video editing software right now that can utilize the dynamic panel for color grading. They are working on support for Final Cut Pro in the future. So I'm gonna show you an example of an application that has full support for the dynamic panel. And for this example, we're gonna be color grading with the dynamic panel in Adobe Premiere Pro. I have my middle button, AKA the tour button under the knob set to bring up my dynamic panel, but I wanna be able to change what panel specifically pops up. So what you'll do is you'll click on the button and then it will pull up the tour menu and you have already off the bat four different options you can choose from and you can also add more yourself if you would like and really customize it any way you want. So you have color wheels and match, vignette, creative, as well as basic correction. And in this scenario, I'm gonna use basic correction. Open up Adobe Premiere Pro. From there, I'll just select a clip that I want to color grade, press the tour button on my controller, and then boom, the basic correction dynamic panel pops up. And all I really need to use is the scroll wheel and the knob in the middle to make any changes. So quickly, let's run through this and we'll do a quick color grade. So let's start with the contrast. It's looking a little, cause it's log, so it's a little flat. Bunch of contrast. Bring up the exposure just a little bit. Bring down the shadows. And just like that, I was able to take the clip from this to this just by using two different knobs on my controller. So the panel for Final Cut Pro currently can allow you to show and hide different menus as well as bring up the color scopes. But in the future, they are gonna be working on support for color grading. So far, it integrates with Lightroom, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, Capture One, as well as basic Apple and Windows functions like volume, brightness. And although Final Cut Pro doesn't have 100% support just yet for the dynamic panel, they do have 100% support for custom commands and mapping out the buttons pretty much any way you would like. So what's really cool about the Torbox console software is the feature of auto switching. And when you have it enabled here, whatever app you actually switch to, it will automatically automatically switch back and forth between whichever application you have open. So an example, turn on auto switching right here. I'm in Adobe Premiere Pro. If I click on Final Cut Pro, it quickly switches in between the two super fast. So as far as price for this controller, Torbox sent me their Torbox Elite Pro controller in the translucent black which is kind of reminiscent of like the old school GameCube or PlayStation controllers back in the day. It's a really cool color and if you do pick one up, make sure to get this one. So the Torbox Elite in translucent black currently runs for 308 US dollars. And then the storage case and cable bundle that they sent me goes for 333 US dollars. If you don't wanna spend as much money and you don't really care about the translucent black color, they feature two other colors, standard classic black, as well as the ivory white. Those go for 268 US dollars with the controller themselves. And then the bundle with the cable and storage case is 293 US dollars. If you don't wanna spend as much money and you don't really care about the haptic feedback or the Bluetooth connectivity. They also sell the Torbox Neo, which I mentioned earlier. The Torbox Neo runs for $169 with the controller itself, including the USB-C cable. 
and then with the storage case it goes for 179 so ten dollars more and you can get a storage case so around a month and a half ago Torbox sent me the controller to review and as for the video I kind of forced myself to use it in its intended case of just editing with one hand and after a few weeks after deadlines and projects started to stack up I found myself gravitating back to what I know and for the last three years I've been using the MX Master 3 mouse from Logitech as well as the standard Apple Magic Keyboard to edit and that's been a pretty good workflow for me. I don't know if it's an ADD or an undiagnosed ADHD thing for me or if it's just me in general but it just takes so much time for me to really learn something like this and whenever I do this for my job and I have projects to complete in a short amount of time it's hard for me to just really relearn how to edit essentially and with a product like this you definitely have to do that. After a few weeks of using this I can wholeheartedly say I will never take this off of my desk because now I use all three in tandem. Probably not its intended use case, but it helps me work and edit a lot faster. I use my Torbox controller for zooming in and out of the timeline, moving around the timeline, stopping and starting the clips, as well as undoing and redoing any mistakes. I use my keyboard for specific Apple commands for Final Cut Pro, like showing video scopes, hiding menus. And then I use my MX Master 3 for some specific things and just moving around the clips and as well as deleting clips because the MX Master 3 has a lot of cool functionality that you can customize as well in and of itself. And so most of the time, actually, if I'm being honest, I'm just using these two. I'll only really use the keyboard whenever I need to do specific commands. But for the most part, I'm using both of these and it helps me work and edit a whole lot faster. And like I said, I know that's not the intended use case. You're supposed to be able to use this with one hand and essentially edit with one hand. But for me, there's a lot of things that I just want to do with my mouse because it's a lot easier. And then this has kind of taken the place of the keyboard for the most part. And I feel like once I learn the specific commands and map them into the controller, I'll probably never even need to use a keyboard whenever I'm video editing. So should you go out and buy the Torbox controller? Yes, only if you have the time and money because it is a little bit expensive around 308 US dollars and to be expected, it's going to take you some time to learn it. The software is great and it's really intuitive. You can completely customize it from top to bottom. The controller itself is quality, well built. The buttons feel great. And overall, if you can learn it and you can invest the time into it, it truly can speed up your workflow. Overall, I love it. I feel like once they implement the dynamic panel feature for Final Cut Pro to color grade, it's just gonna make my process even faster. The sheer amount of customization you can do is just amazing. You can do so much with just one little controller. Do you need it? Probably not. I mean, you can just get by with a mouse and keyboard, but for people like me, and people that do this for a job. Speed is everything, and if I can find a way to speed up my workflow, even if it takes me time, honestly, to me, it's worth the investment. You can find the link to their website in the description below to purchase the controller, and with that, that's the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.